Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Off the Glass Podcast. Today, we've got our Steph Curry episode, episode 30. Can't believe we're already 30 episodes deep. And again, we are in the heart of the NFL season. Week two is going to wrap up a recording this before the Monday night football game. So by the time y'all are watching this or listening to this, um, those games will have already passed, but we haven't seen them yet. So keep that in mind as you're listening. But um, most of week two is already wrapped up. And today we're going to be playing a little bit of a game. We're going to be have a lot of statements here over a lot of teams or players or coaches. And I just want to know if this is an overreaction or if this is just a reality for this team, this player, for this 2023 NFL season. Because in two weeks, it's a lot of people going up and it's a lot of people going down. Um, so we have a, a, a lot to cover. Going to get the housekeeping out of the way, as always. If you are on YouTube, be sure to like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Follow the socials there on the screen at Off the Glass Pod on Instagram and at Off the Glass Podcast on TikTok. If you're on audio platforms, leave a five star review, pre download the show. And I know this is the Off the Glass Podcast, but we've been strictly football for about the last <laughs> 10 episodes or so. So I don't know. Y'all got some new podcast names? Do you? Drop a comment, DM the channel. We might have to do a little rebrand because we've been doing a lot of off the gridiron lately. So the, the top two names I've heard is ours off the gridiron, and uh was well, another one was on the grass. Those are the those are the, the top names that I've heard so far. We gotta so we have, find a way to combine the basketball and the football. Right now it's just OTG. That's just what it is. It's okay. just OTG. <laughs> <laughs> but uh uh-huh. but yeah, definitely we gotta 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 mesh those together. Look, York Steelers are playing on Monday night. I know I always start the pot off asking you how we doing today, but really, how you feeling? How are we feeling about this game tonight? Big one, division game on Monday night football. How are we feeling? I'm feeling great, man. I'm feeling good. Uh, my Steelers, we're going to get this win tonight, man. I just feel like after being embarrassed <laughs> the way we were <laughs> against the Niners, man, I, just, I think we're going to pull this one out. You know what I mean? I think a lot of people jumped the gun a little bit on the Steelers. Um saying that you know like because a lot of people picked us to be this this really good team this year I, I wanted to be the sleeper but i wanted to go under the radar i wanted to sneak up on teams but you know what i'm saying the 49ers heard the noise and kind of you know scraped us up a little bit but it's all good we're gonna bounce back against the browns their offense doesn't impress me that much i'm gonna be honest that, that defense is scary though i will mm-hmm. say that the defense is legit but i think we our defense is good too you know what i'm saying i think we got the best defensive player in the world i think we gonna he's gonna show it you know what i mean i, I think he's gonna that. show it he ain't Micah. That's all hey, I know. You're right. He's better. You're right. He, That's he is. crazy. He's better. <laughs> He's better than Micah. You know what I'm saying? So we got we got the best defensive player in the world. I think he's going to show it tonight just like how even in a blowout loss, T.J. Watt still had like three sacks and two forced fumbles. Like he's, he's always going to do his thing. That and it's just a matter of having that offense step up. No, Deontay Johnson is going to be a little worrisome, but I think we can pull it out tonight. Hey, I got George Pickens. And I need him to have a big game tonight for fantasy reasons. <laughs> so he, he, he holding your team together, him. huh? He holding your team together. He he, he, he holding my week two chances in his hands right now. I need about <laughs> probably like seven, eight catches, maybe like a buck twenty, two, three Damn. tutties. How many points you need him to score? I I don't need that much. I like <laughs> I like it to be comfortable though. Oh okay, God, what's name? Realistically, I I need him to score. I just need I just need a touchdown out of him. Saints defense about to go crazy against Carolina. So I mean, if he could give me like a solid twelve, I'm cool. It's funny because my pops in our family league in the same boat. Like and everyone's played. Uh, he's playing against my mom. Everyone's played already. He down fourteen points. All he got is George Pickens left. He needs George Pickens to score a touchdown or go crazy or something. So everybody, a lot of riding, a lot of is riding on NL, on NFL Young Boy right now. Mm-hmm. I need him to turn up. But let's go ahead. Let's let's start there with the Steelers and go ahead and get into this game. Overreaction or reality? Matt Canada's offense is not going to work out this year, and he will be fired after the season. I'll say reality because I want that to happen. Not yeah. not an offense not working out, but I do want him to get fired, bro. Like, okay, his we've talked about it before in the podcast, right? It's just so predictable. Like, that's the real problem. Like, first down, Najee's in first and ten, handoff run play. 
or like we we put someone we put Jalen Warren in. Oh, it's a pass, but like everything is just so predictable. Run pass, run pass, run pass. Like they don't disguise anything. Like you were talking about how the Niners can line up in the same formation and do five different things from that formation. Right. You're never gonna know what's coming. Um, same thing, like, I, we just watched uh, the, my, the Dolphins game yesterday, and I'm just like, bro, they're running this same play, but they're doing so many different things from this one play. Like, you you don't know what's coming. Like, wa- going from watching teams like that, like the Niners, like the Dolphins, who are so great at disguising things, have, like, just just the play designs are so great, to watching the Steelers, where it's just so bland and so predictable, it absolutely pisses me off. And that's why it pissed me off when people are like out on Kenny Pickett after one week. I'm like, bro, one remaining the best defense, one of the best defenses in football. And two, well, our play caller is not helping him out right now. Like, not yeah. So, I, I actually do hope he gets fired and we get an actual, you know, good offensive mind in there. Yeah, we'll see tonight. Like you said, division game. It's Monday night football. Y'all need to bounce back after last week. As good as the Browns' defense looked week one, I do not think they are in the same caliber as the 49ers. So hopeful yeah. that Kenny looks better, the offense looks better for, for your sanity. <laughs> it we lose the night. <laughs> we lose the night. Ah, oh, man. I might not record the next episode. Hey, look. Speaking of, there are, I think, eight teams left in the league who are 0-2, so without a win. And... Some of them are surprising teams that I don't think people were expecting to start out this slow. One of them being the Cincinnati Bengals. Obviously, week one, very, very disappointing showing for their entire offense Mm -hmm. as a whole. And obviously, now we've got the Joe Burrow re-aggravating the calf strain in their week two matchup against Baltimore, which came down to the wire, but Baltimore just made a couple more plays at the end. They got the stop when they needed to, um, and they come out winning. I think it was 27 to 24 in that game. You now have the Bengals who could potentially be without Burrow for at least a week. It seems like Zach Taylor couldn't confirm if he would play next week or not. So that's at minimum one week up in question. They're already 0-2. This offense looked better in week two and week one, but still is not performing to the levels that people were expecting it to. Now, on top of that, the defense has this same question marks I think it did coming into this season. So overreaction or reality, the Bengals should be in panic mode right now. I think it's reality. Now, the only reason why I say I think it's reality because the Bengals started 0-2 last year. So it's not like they can't start 0-2 and then bounce back from it. But the main thing is this injury for the, to Joe Burrow. Mm-hmm. Like, if, if Joe Burrow is, is healthy 100%, I genuinely think they can start 0-2 and they'll be just fine. Like, they'll rattle off some wins. I think they play the Rams next. Like, they'll be fine. But if you're telling me you guys are starting 0-2 and then you guys are playing the Rams, which has looked like a way better team than everyone thought they were going to look coming yeah, into the we, season. Yeah, we're going to get into them. Cause yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so... That's not an easy like before this before the season. People probably pencil that and it's like, all right, that's an easy win. Healthy Joe Burrow or not, that's not an easy win. The Rams look great. Um, so if he doesn't play this game, they drop oh if they drop to zero and three, that's tough. So I, I genuinely think it is panic mode strictly because the Joe Burrow injury. Um, it, it's gonna hurt. Don't get me wrong, it's definitely gonna hurt because they're already not looking great. Like you said, if you miss your starting quarterback, your star QB. It, it, it's going to be real rough for you guys. Um, and not to mention, right, like Deshaun Watson didn't look great against them in week one, but he really didn't have to because they held Joe Burrow to 82 points. They did give up 206 yards on the ground in week one. Um, and then yesterday to the Ravens, I think they gave up over 200 again, right? Did they not um, pull that up? 178. Um, for the Ravens rushing. So lots of, lots of gaps in that defense getting exposed. Um, I, I think I, w- I would agree. I maybe not full, full panic, but it's not calm and easy in Cincinnati right now. No, not because at all. On, on, right on top of the Joe Burrow injury, which obviously I'm not a doctor, but 
we've seen that calf strains get taken very seriously because that's the one step away from an Achilles injury, which sideline you for a whole season. So you have to be very careful with that. And that's now his second one, this to from training camp till now um, on top of how he looked starting. Obviously a lot of that had to do with Russ. Like I say he looked better in week two, but the offense is not as explosive as it's looked in the past. And this T Higgins situation, I feel like is not getting as much attention as it should have. Like he's not going to be in Cincinnati much longer. Like it no. seems like they're made, they've made the decision that they don't want to go big with him and Jamar and Joe on contracts and really lock down their books that way. And T Higgins is good enough to be in, like the guy, the receiver on probably like 80, 85% of NFL teams right now. He's far Absolutely. away would go into most receiving cores and be the best receiver there. So he's going to go and get his bag somewhere else. And so the window of this crazy explosive offense where it seemed like, you know, they just were in the Super Bowl, um, you know, two years ago, that seems to have closed very, very fast. Um, and starting the season, knowing that really coming into this season that you're not going to have this group together for that much longer. Now you have the injury. Now you have the only two start like, and both division games at that. So like just rough, rough start for the Bengals. I think there has to be some for real level of concern there um, out in Cincinnati that they just aren't what they, at least the season didn't start the way that they were expecting it to. Um, and they need to, to shore up the defense and get Burroughs health situated for sure. Yeah, and, uh, like, they started 0-2 last year, but, like, that's not a recipe for success. Like, you don't want to keep doing that. Just because you can come back from that doesn't mean that's something that you want to keep doing. And like you said, especially losing to two division opponents, that is – that adds a problem. So, I I think it's time to panic for them. Not saying they're done. Like, I'm not saying they're, like, not going to miss the playoffs completely, but it's it's definitely worrisome right now. Mm Mm-hmm. Um. So on to another one, overreaction or reality. I know we talked about this uh, on last episode. The Jets need to move on from Zach Wilson, overreaction or reality. That's reality, bro. That's absolutely <laughs> reality, bro. He is so bad, bro. I like He's so bad. Granted, there, he's playing the Cowboys defense. I expected him to look that bad, like. Yeah. He, he didn't surprise me or anything. Like I knew he was gonna mm-hmm. look that bad, but but honestly, he would have looked that bad against the Cowboys. He would have looked that bad against the Texans. Like he's just a bad quarterback, and like it's gonna sound harsh, but like, but it's the truth. Like he's just not a good quarterback, and that's not saying he can't develop into something great later on or something at least solid later on down the line. But as of right now, the way this team is constructed, they're built to win. They're built to win right now. The defense is built to win. You got a strong running game. You got a star receiver. Like, their team is built to win now. So, to just throw away the season, have Zach kind of waste it, it, it would just be tough, bro. Like, I, I'm I'm in the in the, the camp of they need to get a veteran quarterback in there that could at least just game manage and give them a chance. Because you've seen – apparently Aaron Rodgers is eyeing a playoff comeback. <laughs> That's bro, what he said. If Aaron Rodgers comes – if they make the playoff, right, and, like, it's like the second round – and he just like sprints out of the tunnel, <laughs> like That'd this be- is WWE, <laughs> fully padded, ready to go, bro. I'm going on a darkness retreat. Clearly, he got, <laughs> he, he's got the 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 secret sauce, bro. Nah, <laughs> I don't know what he's got going on. I mean, Whatever. hey, Cam, Cam Maker tore his AC, uh, Achilles, and he came back. He sucked, but <laughs> like he he came back though. Uh, he said they did some, it's some like special surgery. That's like new technology to put like a brace on the Achilles and some quick re- look. He got a robotic foot. That's what they telling me. He went to the surgeon that did Kobe's Achilles repair. So Kobe's is my favorite player ever. Kobe sucked after the Achilles. That's- now, Kobe, Kobe is my, listen, if y'all don't know, Kobe is my favorite player of all time, bro. Kobe was not good at the towards Achilles, bro. So, like, that part does not move me not one bit. Hey, uh, look, I'll, I'll go on a darkness retreat for real, for real. If he come back <laughs> in the playoffs at age 40 after tearing his Achilles, <laughs> that would be crazy. But um, 
I want to give Zach Wilson some slack because, like you said, I this Cowboys defense made Daniel Jones look also like not an NFL level quarterback in Week One. They're going to do that to a lot of teams this year. Obviously, it doesn't help that we've already got a lot of tape on Zach Wilson being boo boo against every team basically at this point. Exactly. So adding, you know, was it three more picks to that? It definitely doesn't help. Um, and at least two of them were really like, I don't even know what you're throwing type of interceptions. Like one was that fade ball safety is clearly sitting on an easy pick mm-hmm. from Malik Cooker. The other one he threw on a like a dump off that just sailed over the guy's head right into Dick's hands. But if you rewatch that play, he has CJ Uzama on the opposite crossing route, butt naked in front of his face, like just never looks his way. Um, those I, I cannot justify. I would, I'd like to see him play. Because, like, who do they have next week? That That's what I was going to say. The problem is they're going to play the Patriots defense. Oh, gosh. Then, get a, little, then get a little bit of a break with the Chiefs. Then play the Broncos. Like, that, it's not going to get no easier for them. That's that's the only problem. Yeah. So, it's like, if you're going to make that decision, you got to make it now. Because you guys can't start. What would that be? Owen and and e- three is Owen 3 is two, a very rough deficit to come back from. Owen 2 is difficult. Owen 3 is, like... They won, they won the first game though. They like they're that's the oh, part that's sure. you're right. They, they beat they, the Bills, yeah. They beat the Bills, uh, which is crazy to think about. Josh Allen is crazy. <laughs> okay, you know what? <laughs> one and one. You said he has Patriots, Chiefs, Broncos. Yep. Wait, 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 hold on. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Patriots, Chiefs, Broncos, then Eagles. That's the bro, those but wait, but wait. Tough. Patriots defense, yes, legit. Uh if you said next Chiefs. Is Chiefs, Chiefs is next, yep. Chiefs defense has looked solid two games. Mm-hmm. They obviously we saw what they did. They really only held Detroit to 14, and they just held Jacksonville to nine. Yeah, they look good. Um, so okay, two quality defenses back to back. Denver defense, I think we might be able to strip that elite tag up off of there, and we'll get to that in a little bit because yeah, suspect they, they still got some playmakers. I say that they, they definitely they, have playmakers because because certain. I'm not going to say he's going to lock up uh, Garrett, but he can neutralize him a little bit. And at that mm-hmm. point, what what are your other weapons? Like you're throwing Alan Lazard. And Hand Randall the Cobb. ball to Breeze. But he only got four touches against the Cowboys. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough, bro. I'm telling you, it's tough. Then that Eagles defense, I mean, hasn't looked the best, but it's still they still got playmakers on that defense too. Yeah. So it's like, long story short, he's not going to play – the Falcons, the Texans, like he's not, right. he doesn't have those like layups on his schedule as far as yeah. like defenses he's playing. So he doesn't have an opportunity to get himself composed, get comfortable, get his confidence up, which right. is what this entire Aaron Rodgers tenure was supposed to be him on the sidelines, just learning for what seemed like it was going to be like maybe two years, three years might be pushing it, but probably two seasons. The Jets are in their win now mode. You have him studying behind one of the best to ever do it. And then when Rodgers retires, now you've got Zach Wilson who's ready to, like, fully step into that role. It sucks that he's probably in the most scrutinizing market in all of sports in New York. He's going to hear all of that criticism. There is never going to be any level of patience there. So overreaction or reality, I think for this season as a whole, it's unfortunately probably a reality. I, I know I said last week I'd like to see it, and I still would like to see a game not against the Cowboys defense. It's unfortunate that the Patriots are the next game. So, like, like you say, you just don't have that many opportunities. Like, there's no layup games for him to just say, okay, we've got, you know, the Bears or something on schedule like a team where you can feel comfortable you may be able to get into a rhythm and that may give you momentum for later down the line when you play the Patriots. It's like you have some level of comfortability with Hackett, play calls, stuff that you like to go to and different down and distances. Like you're not going to get the opportunity, bro. Bill Belichick is about to scheme you up. So, yeah, 
Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it may be time to, to call it before they have to pull the plug on this season um, and keep it in a place where you do hold out for Aaron Rodgers' Superman returns in January. But man, people were uh, like, that was the question mark of people or the Jets even with Aaron Rodgers, like all oh, these first six games, like they could start two and four, or they could start one and five potentially. So it's like you said about Aaron Rodgers for Zach Wilson. It's like, that, it, it's going to get ugly, bro. It's going to yeah. get real ugly. And I just don't think that they're in a position where they can waste games. Mm hmm. And just throw games, just trying to hope, just hoping Zach Wilson could be better than what he is, because he's not, bro. And for all the people that are like, oh, maybe Zach Wilson, he might have, he was learning under Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers has been there for like what three months? <laughs> like, how long has Aaron Rodgers been? There? He hasn't even been there that long yeah. to be hey, teaching you that much. Hard knock sold me, bro. <laughs> I was <laughs> a believer. Because <laughs> hard knock, bro. Listen, you know how I knew Zach Wilson sucked, like. Like, I've been those that will suck. But I knew that he was really bad once Aaron Rodgers was like, yeah, I'll take you under my wing. I'll teach you. Da, da, da. Aaron Rodgers is not that type of guy. Bro. Aaron Rodgers is not a mentor <laughs> if he feels threatened. So if he knows, like, all right, this guy really can't take my job, even if he worked 365, 24-7. Yeah, sure, I'll mentor you. Like, that's when I knew Zach Wilson <laughs> was a lost cause, bro. I'm sorry. Oh, man. Yeah, that's tough. Like I said, I do – I, I want to see it, like, selfishly, just, like, as a football fan. Like, bro, what would this season look like if they really just, like, just let Zach ride it out? But I – as a, if I was a Jets fan, mm -mm. I wouldn't even have liked to see it in Buffalo. I would, who else is on the roster? Anybody, bro, please. Where, where's Strebler? Where's that guy that, that, <laughs> right, that came bro. in? Right. Anybody Give me Flacco. Else. Somebody. Yeah. Put Randall bro. Cobb back there. <laughs> anybody <laughs> please uh okay got another one I'm gonna keep it in the same game overreaction or reality micah parsons is a legitimate mvp candidate mvp mvp that's what, that's what he said he's going for this year mvp is an overreaction because okay that's tough everyone knows at this point bro it's a quarterback award bro like it just it's not always fair. There's certain times where I definitely felt like a non quarterback should have won that award, but at the end of the day, the quarterback with the best stats is gonna win that award. Now, I mean you do say candidate, not like favor or anything, like just straight up candidate. Mm -hmm. Right now, week two. I mean, now that I think about it, there's no like clear front runner. That I'd say, like, even like Pat Mahomes, his numbers hasn't been like crazy. He missed Kelsey the first game. Josh Allen, no. Bro, hell no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lamar, eh. I mean, I, now that I think about it, maybe. I, I'd lean I, over reaction, but I can see it. I can see it I, a little bit. I, I'm going to add some context. So the last defensive player to win the MVP award, uh, you have to go all the way back to 1986, which was Lawrence Taylor's MVP season. Um, and that was the year he set a team record with 20 and a half sacks in a single season. He became just the second defensive player in NFL history to win the MVP award. Um, this is what I will say. If we're talking about strictly a singular player's impact on, you know, it's no two way players in the NFL. So on one side of the ball, you're you're not you're going to be hard pressed to put together an argument that there are more than three or four guys who are doing that at any position and giving more impact on either side of the ball than Micah. The way that he's able to, I think, I think it was Bart Scott was on first take talking about oh if they want to you know line Micah up inside head up on a guard whatever is like, he's not 300 pounds like we're gonna run right at him and then somebody put it on twitter with a clip of him tossing elijah verrett tucker and tackling dalvin cook in the backfield like you you there's nobody in the nfl right now that can handle him he's too fast he's too strong he's too explosive he's really just too athletic for every single position on the offensive line 
And like I said, selfishly, I still wish we did some stuff to mix him up and put him in coverage because he would be still one of the fastest linebackers in the NFL if he did that too. Like he is a very, very rare breed of player that we have not seen in a very long time, maybe not since Lawrence Taylor in 1986. So do I think he's necessarily going to win it? I don't know. Like you said, it's going to be very, very tough for any non-quarterback player. Like even if you were the best receiver in the NFL, it's hard to win MVP. That's really become a quarterback dominated award. But I mean, three sacks in the first two games, a forced fumble, fumble recovery. Um, And I think he's sitting at eight QB hits already. Um, in the first two games, like he's on pace to put up those kinds of numbers. His defense is going to be cream of the crop in the NFL. I think he has a fair shot. So I'm going to go with reality. Maybe I'm being a little biased there, but I think he really is that generational of a talent to like maybe be able to break out of just the defensive player of a year box and be at least in consideration for the MVP award. They would have to um I, I would I can see the Cowboys defense being this good the whole season. Like that's definitely not a problem. I can see him leading that charge obviously. But there would have to be um like the trend that is going on right now between at least within the first 2 weeks of the season would have to keep going on as far as there's not one quarterback that's absolutely just like going crazy as far as statistics. Like last mm-hmm. year off the rip, I think Patrick Holmes threw for 300 plus and what three or four touchdowns week one. So like off the rip, like this was his award years a couple years ago with Aaron Rodgers. Like he was just the statistics were crazy. Right now, there isn't. I mean, maybe Tua. That's the only guy I could think about that's really statistically just going crazy. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, it would have to be the trend continues. There's not just one clear cut quarterback that's just going crazy and then the Cowboys defense has to continue being like this great which I think that can happen so it's definitely a possibility but he's not even the best defensive player in the league that's TJ Watt so like MVP what are we even talking about here it's TJ Watt's the best so like what are we talking about stop <laughs> cat, bro Mm-mm. Micah is really he's, he's different it's really crazy to Micah's watch different. him he did some stunt yesterday against the, against the Jets where he lined up out wide Took like three steps upfield, cut right, looped in around into the A gap. And it looked like it was in like, like it was sped up, like it was like two times speed. Because as soon as he got to the A gap, he was like on Zach Wilson in what felt like two steps. He's different. He's an athletic freak, bro. Like it's not even fair watching him play against these linemen. Yeah. It, I imagine that's got to be what it was like back in the day to watch like. Reggie White or like Deacon Jones, like elite pass rushers. When I feel like there weren't that many of them, nor were they passing the ball like that. So mm-hmm. I feel like to to be known as a elite pass rusher in a time where like the game was still very much run dominated, you had to really be getting to the quarterback on third down, bro. It means every single time they were passing, you was back there because they barely right. was passing. <laughs> Also, side note, it's always funny to see that. I feel like they do it every couple of years on ESPN. They do a breakdown of Deacon Jones with, like, the head slap. Bro, how is that a pass rush move? <laughs> Literally was coming off the ball just, bang! Like, really just smack you in the head. Uh, that is funny. Um, this next one is going to be a two-parter. Uh, so we'll start with the first part, going back to 0-2 football teams. Overreaction or reality? The Chargers, after starting 0-2, should be in panic mode. That's reality. Now, the only the, the reason I say that is because, right, Justin Herbert threw for, what, 300 yards plus. I don't know the exact numbers. Threw for a couple touchdowns. Cool. And they still lost to the Titans. Like, he throw, he's throwing the ball downfield a little bit more. Like, the defense is fully healthy. Like, everyone's there. The defense is healthy. The O-line is healthy. Now, what I will say, Austin Eckler wasn't there for the second game. But, honestly, if you look at it, Tennessee does a good job against running backs anyway. So, it's not Mm -hmm. to say that he would have been – I mean, he obviously, he would have been a a difference in the game. But it's not to say he would have had this crazy game because the Tennessee's run defense is always really good. But, yeah, the Chargers are healthy. 
you got your quarterback healthy. You got your quarterback more, even more weapons. You got a different coordinator in there. What's the excuse? Like, I, I'm a huge Justin Herbert guy. What is the excuse? Like, there's no reason you guys should have lost to this team. Like, so I think there's a, there's a little bit of uh, a worry that should be out. This is, and I, I love that it worked out this way because it adds to me great context. Week one, they play the Dolphins, right? Super explosive offense. Tua goes for 466 passing yards. Tyree goes for like 215 receiving. The following week, the Dolphins play the Patriots. Ends up being a one-score game. They figured out a way to hold that passing attack into somewhat of check. Granted, it's Bill Belichick. That's what he does is take away at least your number one option. I've never seen a team play that many free safety looks in my life. That was but crazy. It worked. It kept Tyreek Hill at bay for most of the game. They really cut down explosive plays for them, except for that. You know, had one or two deep balls to waddle. Yeah. Um, but other than that, really forced them to play underneath, run the ball, and it almost worked because to have forced one of the deep passes onto Christian Gonzalez, who got the pick. He gave the ball back to their offense with a chance to go and tie the game. Conversely, Chargers just played the Titans, lost in week two in overtime. Ryan Tannehill went 20 for 24 with 246 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. In the week prior, this man looked borderline like he couldn't play in the NFL anymore against New Orleans. 16 for 34 in that game. Three picks. He had a 28 quarterback rating. The Crazy. following week against the Chargers defense, who, like you said, the biggest complaint and excuse for them year after year was health. It's health. We can't be healthy. They're healthy right now. Healthy as they ever be all season. Tannehill had a 28.8 quarterback rating in week one against New Orleans, against the Chargers, a 123.3 quarterback rating Brandon Staley has to be on the hottest seat in the NFL and like, that is the second part <laughs> of, my, of the statement so overreaction or reality Brandon Staley will be fired before this season ends reality and he needs he have we've talked about it he should have been fired so I say it might be an underreaction he <laughs> not even have made it to this season <laughs> exactly far from an overreaction bro he he should have been fired. And now this is even showing more of a reason why he should have been fired in the first place. You are a defensive head coach. Like, that is your MO. Like, you are a defensive head coach. Your guys are healthy. Like you said, you have no excuse as far as health wise. You have all, you're paying all this money to all these players on the defense. You have, quote unquote, all these stars on the defensive end. Why can't y'all stop anybody? Why is y'all run defense? Why has it been terrible for the past, I don't know how many years? Mm-hmm. And then at the same time, people are airing you out. Like, bro, your defense as a whole just sucks. And mm-hmm. to have this many, like, quote unquote, big names on the defensive side of the ball and still not be even bad, just big names, crazy. Big, they big bags were spent on this defense. Yeah. Big contracts were handed, handed out. Khalil Mack, Joey Bosa, JC Jackson, Derwin James. There are big names on this defense. And like I said, and no one's scared of the defense at all. <laughs> Tannehill is looking like the most perfect game manager against them. The week before, I he genuinely could look like not a starting quarter. I was like, bro, they just need to put in Will or, or Malik Willis. Like, do something. Because mm-hmm. there's no point in just riding it out with this. This is like watching a horse die slow. Like, please <laughs> stop it, bro. Yeah. So, I, I, look, I it's funny because I was at the bar on Sunday watching the game, and as I see the Titans – send it into overtime. I was like, I cannot believe this defense is that bad. And the part center turned to me. He's like, why do you think it is? And I just laughed and I was like, I said exactly what you said. Brandon Staley is really a defensive head coach. And like, how is how are you bad at the one? Like usually if you're an offensive head coach, like your offense is solid quality. You might lack on the defense side of the ball, but like you got to be good at what you're supposed to be good at. How are you a defensive head coach and your defense is always the problem on this roster? You were gifted a generational quarterback. And now one of the smartest young OCs who's utilizing the weapons properly. 
Right. I, I think the play calling has been fine. Like, I think they run like I mean, obviously, this last game, they didn't have Eckler. So it's tough to have that run pass balance. But the first game, it was I love the way they were running the ball. I love what they threw the ball in the right yeah. time. Like, I feel like the offense has been fine. They put up 34 points. Yeah. but It's it just, going to be hard to win games at any level of football if you can put up 34 points and lose. That should just be enough to win football games. It should definitely be enough. Like, I knew he was cooked when he came into the first week of the season and just thought, you know, we st- we we really stopped that offense last year when we played press man on them and they weren't ready for it. Let's just do it again. Like, bro, you telling me Mike McDaniels is just like, I, yeah, let's not even look at the game from last season. It's a new year. Let's just try to do the same stuff. No, he can't. With a whole offseason to prepare, you think you, I was really going to stop them again with the same exact thing you guys did last year? Did you see his press conference where the reporter asked him about the Jaguars game from last year? No, I didn't, actually. For, after this, so after they lost to the Tennessee in overtime, they're having the press conference. Reporter asked him, basically, the gist of his question was, do you feel like the blowing that, was it 27-0 to zero lead in the playoffs is still, like, weighing on you or weighing on this team? And he got hot. He was like, that's last season. Like, why are we talking about last year? Like, that Jags game is over with, has no impact. And, like, bro was getting – he got in his feelings a little bit. Don't remind the media of my mess, of my, 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 my problems, my miscues. Don't remind everybody. That's all it was. That's what it sounded like to me. That's what it t- came – like, I – he's not wrong. Like, that's the – you have to kind of word it that way, but it's how he was coming off as, like, for real agitated. And, like, I'm sure he is agitated. He's the head coach of an 0-2 team. But that seat's got to be not just warm, not hot. Scorching. It's got to be – yeah, scorching is the right word. So I, I, I think it's a reality. I don't think he makes it to the end of the season – they mess around, lose a couple more games. They 0 and 3, 1 and 4, 1 and 5. Pull it, pull it. Get it done. Because it's just a waste. You have way too much talent on this team for them to be performing like this. They play the um, Vikings next. If they lose to the Vikings, chalk it now immediately. You know, season's done. Season's done if they lose to the Vikings. Oh my God. They play the Vikings and the Raiders and the Cowboys. They better beat the Chargers. I mean, they better beat the Vikings and the Raiders because they're going to get waxed by the Cowboys. They, and then the Chiefs, they got to be. They have to beat the Vikings and the Raiders. Mm, yeah. So, look, these only two teams, man, it's a lot of question marks with them. Um, we're going to keep on this trend because it's this is a pivotal point for a lot of these teams because – 0-2 can turn to 0-4 real quick. And 0-4 nice. could turn into tank for Caleb Williams real fast. <laughs> so we're going to go on to another 0-2 team. Overreaction or reality? Russell Wilson is to blame for the Broncos' 0-2 start. I actually am going to say that's an overreaction a little bit. I would I, as well. I, I don't – like – as fun as it is to get to, to get on Russ, because it is very fun. It is hilarious sometimes because he, he just makes it so easy. You're, <laughs> like you said, elite defense just gave up 35 points to Sam Howell, who I like. I think Sam Howell is actually genuinely good. But And it wasn't like, no, I mean, Brian Robinson was having himself a day. Tough runs, yeah. run after catch. Great. Sam Howell was sitting in there and he was throwing some Darts, bro. The touchdown, the touchdown pass to Terry. You don't throw that ball on an elite defense if you're not. He's too comfortable back there, bro. <laughs> Way too comfortable to be throwing it forty on a rope like that. They get no pressure. Like he's not getting no pressure. There's not get there. There's no rush. So it's like you telling me I'm supposed to blame the guy who put up thirty three points. Like we said, if you could put up 30 points and lose, like it's not really your fault. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. Granted, I mean, some of that was on a Hail Mary, but still, regardless, he, he still put up a good enough points for his defense, for his elite defense. He should have, he should have got that win. Am do I, you, do you think that that was PI on the two point play? Um, 
I can see both sides. If I'm a Broncos fan, that's absolutely oh, I don't yeah. what. <laughs> but if I'm not, I'm just like, yeah, that's whatever. Like I could see I could see both ways. I can definitely see both ways. But if I'm a Broncos fan, yeah, I'm pissed. <laughs> if I had to pick watching it at like game speed, it does feel a little bang bang, like too tight to it don't feel like it wouldn't feel right to call it. Like it's not yeah. egregious enough. I mean, is it a hair early? Maybe, but it was it was real tight at game speed. It's just the fact that it was that play in that moment. That's really yeah. what it is. Because if it's like a normal play in like the second quarter, like nobody's right. like they lost the game because of this terrible call. Nobody's like that. Yeah, but look, Russ is in both games looked better than last season. The offense is as a whole, like it definitely got stale in the second half of their first game against the Raiders. They were up 21 to three in this game against the commanders. Obviously that kind of evaporated really quickly in like a, it was like an eight minute span between the second and third quarter. Um, but still, like you said, it's losing a game where you put up 33 points on offense, you're throwing for over 300 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. And he also rushed for almost 60 yards as well. Like, was their leading rusher? It's hard to – you can't really pin that on him or really <laughs> Sean Payton. It sounds like God pinned it on Vance Joseph because, like you <laughs> said, it's a lot of playmakers on that Broncos defense, particularly in their secondary. And Sam Howell just kind of tweaked on y'all, which, hey, I, I said he's like that, but – I didn't know he was that like that. I said, I'm, I'm about to say, I'm a Sam Howell guy. I, th- I thought yeah. he was solid ever since I seen him play against the boys last year. I'm like, I just, he got a little, he got that it. I had no reason. Like I said, I had no, I didn't even see him play in college. It's like, you know, he got, he got some, he got the it. But yeah, you, it's, you can't, you can't say Russ is the biggest problem after watching a game like that. Not, even if you still think he's not like the best or he's not going to be enough for them to make the playoffs or be good, you can't make it seem like, like last year, it was like, bro, this is rust. Like no, that 100%. defense. Like last year, it was like that defense is stout. Like it, it was great, and rust just can't get nothing going. This year, definitely an improvement. Still not the best, but you can't fully blame it on rust. Yeah, and look, their schedule it's not getting easier. I mean, those were two games that you lose by one point, then you lose by two points. You would really want to have those because coming up. They do have the Dolphins. They Ooh. do go. They go to Chicago, but then they play the Jets, Chiefs, Packers, Chiefs again, Bills. Like they're done. <laughs> they got a tough, they've got a tough stretch of games. So you really would have wished to be in the Raiders and the Commanders before having to play the Chiefs twice in about like it was that a three week span, four week span, three weeks. Play them twice in October, October twelfth and October 29th. There are the season's already over. It's like I, it's over. You were supposed to, I mean, not supposed to, but you had to have beaten both these teams. You had to start two and zero to even have any, <clears throat> excuse me, any sort of chance. The season's over. It's cooked. You lost to the Raiders, who I didn't even know they apparently they lose to the Raiders. Like there's like a wild streak of them losing to the Raiders. That's crazy. Like, I know they, I know they lose to the Chiefs for like I don't know. I think it's like 15 games or something crazy like that. But to the Raiders, like. Bro, what? <laughs> and then y'all lose to the Commanders. The season's over. Y'all cooked. I'm sorry. That's a shame. And I hope Zach, whether if it's Zach Wilson or Andy Dalton, I don't know who's in there for the Jets. I still hope they win that game when they play the Broncos. I, I still, hope they do don't too. Think it was talking crazy. Oh, I still. No, hope that, not, that defense is gonna be. They're gonna be juiced for that one. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be like Colorado, Colorado State all over again. <laughs> Speaking of, you watch that game live. Yo, I fell asleep, bro. Oh, I fell no. asleep. I fell a- bro, the game was taking mad yeah, long to was- start. Oh, and you on the East Coast? Yeah. That's, that's what I'm bro. I was falling asleep in overtime. Like, yo, this need to- this needs to wrap up, bro. Bro, I-, I I think I fell asleep when I think who th- I- when they got the pick. As soon as they got the pick, number seven had got the pick on Colorado. Mm-hmm. I fell asleep right after that. Oh. And I woke up. I checked my phone. I said, double OT. I said, oh, no, nah, I just missed the classic. Crazy. I, can't, crazy I went back. I, I did watch the. I watched how it ended, but yeah, it was crazy, cool. man. Hey, i never seen a team. This man, I, Colorado State quarterback threw for about 275 off of just mesh. <laughs> they didn't run no other play. 
Right. Strictly the whole game. mesh. And he was, uh, at the beginning, he was right old. He made some plays. I was like, bro, what are you doing? Like, that did look bad. All right, let him get comfortable off a of straight drag routes, bro. And yeah, we can't get one zone coverage play out of Colorado. Like, I'm literally looking at my TV like, how many times are you going to play pro- – Tight press man against drag. And not only that, bro, the last touchdown that Colorado State scored in regulation, but this man is in press man. One, like literally first step off the line, he gave up the inside. How many drags do, at minimum, like you can't get beat across your face. At like, at least let him run the go by you. You, you can't get beat across your, your face. You know this is all they've been doing all game, bro. Crazy, man. Uh, Wow. It's crazy. They look at they pulled that one out because man, yeah, that was they bad. Number, that. number eleven is corny for that for that hit too. That Bro, was great. That I don't understand. Crazy. Like I let me not say I don't understand because I know how the rules work. Targeting if it's a helmet to helmet injury or anything involving head and neck area, you're gonna get the initial automatic ejection. That play is worse than a lot of the targeting ejections that we see. At the college level or the NFL level, by, by far. far. It's not even close, The bro. ball bounced off the ground before he made contact with him. Like, come on, bro. Bro. He I, weaved like, his own teammate to hit him, bro. It was, the, like, the definition of intentional. Like, you, there's no, like, he didn't see the ball. Maybe he thought he caught it. Like, there was n- nothing, nothing to tell me, uh, like, that that wasn't intentional, bro. Right. That was, cr- and on their, their best player. It just happened to be on Travis Hunter too. Like, come on, bro. That was, that was bad. That's a terrible. That should have been an easy ejection. Right. Because to me, the play. I don't know if you saw it. I think it was an overtime, or it was definitely towards the end of the game, where their best D lineman, number eight, his last name is Kamara. Um, he got ejected for targeting on Shador. Oh yeah. He, he bear hugged mm-hmm. him and drove it down. To me. The, the hit on Travis Hunter is worse than that. Not to Way say that, that the bear hug is not worthy of the ejection because by the rules now, you can't drive people into the ground like that, and especially not – he has no way to, like, brace his fall. Um, But Travis Hunter is crazy. And now he's out. I think the report just came out today. He's out for three weeks with a lacerated kidney. See, like, that's just corny, bro, because, like, why are we trying to – like – you're risking people's health out here just because right. you're tight about a game, bro. You're like genuinely risking people's health. Like that's not cool, bro. That's mad corny. Yeah, he the one that gave up the uh, I think the two point conversion I sent it into overtime anyway. That play, I like I don't know why more teams don't run that. The little RPO like why pop pass you just have yeah. to. I just right feel like it's always open every it time, bro. If you you have a like slight run fake, you pull the linebacker this way. You got the tight end take two steps up the field, like he gonna block and bend it on like a glance route. It's never gonna be anybody there, bro. Pull it, throw it, easy. Uh, yeah, that that game was crazy. That play was crazy. I think I just read that that guy is getting death threats now, which. I mean, I may be going a little bit too far. Well, not That's maybe. Old. Y'all, y'all are going too far. Yeah, that yeah, it's it don't, but, it's not needed for that. But he is a cornball for that. Though. Yeah, definitely should have been an ejection. Um, all right, got another one for you here. Overreaction or reality? Bijan is already a top five running back in the NFL. Call me crazy, but I think that's reality. Really. Like, I bro, I think it's re- bro. You got to think about all the running backs that are in the NFL right now. Yeah, let's just name a bunch of running backs. You got Nick Chubb. Cool, he can still be one, one, two, whatever. He can still be one. Derrick Henry is looking older. He's not washed. I'm not gonna say he's completely washed. If I have to start a team right now, even if it's just for this year, do I want B. John Robinson or this version of Derrick Henry? I want B. John Robinson. I'm be honest. Okay. Derrick Henry, he doesn't. I mean, he never was an explosive runner. He always yeah. was a power back. But he just, I don't know. It just doesn't see, it doesn't feel the same. You know what I mean? Um, CMC is still up there. CMC is looking great. Like, mm-hmm. he's look like he's not aging. Aaron Jones is still a great running back, but he's hurt right now. He's just, like, he's looking older as well. But obviously, when he's on the field, still explosive, still a great receiving back. Then Josh Jacobs hasn't, it's only, like, again, it's only two games, but. Yeah. 
Yeah, Saquon look like looked really good against he the did. Cardinals. But hurt. Yeah, he you know what I mean? Hurt. Like these guys yeah. are older, they're getting hurt. You know what I mean? So like what's really stopping Bijan from being a top five back right now? He looks when every time he touches the ball, he does something amazing. Every single time he touches the ball, like there's plays that there's that one play that's going around on Twitter right now where it's like, bro, it should be a three to four yard loss. And he just shakes number 55 out of his shoe, <laughs> then shakes his other defender out of his shoe. Like even this touchdown in week one, bro, he catches it and has like a half a second to, to make the move. And he just <clears throat> sidestep. And he, like, bro, he's just, he's too explosive. He's too fast. Yes. He's too strong. He's too elusive. Like I'm telling you, bro, he, all right, if you want to say top six, seven, cool. I'm I'm fine with saying top five. I don't care. I'm fine with saying it. And he doesn't even have a full workload. Tyler Algier, Tyler Algier is still working in there. That's a good point because right now he is, I think he's second in the NFL in total rushing yards, fourth in total yards from scrimmage, averaging 6.2 yards per carry, which is insane efficiency. Um. And he, I'm trying to think like off the top of my head in terms of like the most hard to bring down players. And like that combines power, you know, trucking ability or just pure elusiveness and athleticism. He's, I think, also in the top five in that category, factor in any ball carrier, receiver, or running back, tight end, whatever. Because he is still like Bijan is like what six two. He's a he's big back. He's a big back that can move that good. Like right. he's the talent wise. He's, he's only five eleven. He looked taller than that. He's not just five eleven. I thought he was like six one. I'm not gonna lie. I thought he was that tall. <laughs> he looked taller than that. Yeah, I don't know. But regardless, five eleven two fifteen is still that's a he's a large man. Uh, exactly. He's just. Talent wise, there's no doubt in my mind he's, he's a top five back right now. He just he looks great every time he touches the ball. And just imagine what he would do if they just say, you know what, you are a featured back, you have the full workload. Now, granted, it's probably not the best as far as like his health, but just imagine the numbers that he would put up if he actually if there wasn't no Tyler Algier back there, the the numbers he put up would be crazy. But I understand why they're doing it though, why they're like splitting carries because Al- Algier is a good running back too. Like he's also very efficient. He's a really good running back. So he's not like it's not like they're just giving carries to some bum. Like they're, they're their running attack is really good. But I I can't imagine if he had a CMC Saquon type of workload, bro. He it would be disgusting. Yeah, it he he's gonna be a monster in fantasy for the next. Six years minimum. Yeah, yeah. I just hope he stays healthy. Just pray to yeah. God he stays healthy. Yep. Can't wait. I can't wait for him to put up insane numbers just for the Falcons to not pay him. <laughs> and to be like, just to be like, yeah, you're not worth nothing though. But if you want to trade, if we want to trade you though, we're gonna value you up here. All right. We but need a first gonna, and a young player. We need a first and a young superstar. But we're not gonna pay you up here. What? That, what? That don't make sense. We're gonna pay you down here. <laughs> nasty, nasty work by the NFL owners. Um uh, spending a lot of time talking about 0-2 teams. Let's talk about a 2-0 team that has, I think has shocked all NFL fans. So overreaction or reality, Baker Mayfield is a quality starter in the NFL in the year of 2023. Man. For those that don't know, I am a Lakers fan. I mean, not like, well, yeah, I am a Lakers fan, <laughs> but I'm a Steelers fan, and I, I hate Baker, bro. I hate the Browns. Baker kicked us out of the playoffs that one year when we were like started eleven and zero. I knew we was frauds. I'm not gonna lie. I knew we yeah, that's super good. fraudulent. I knew we, were, I knew we were frauds. So, but still, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not gonna say that in the moment. And then Baker like eliminates out the playoffs. I'm a big OBJ fan. He almost tarnished his whole image, mm-hmm. trying to ruin my man's career. But yes, he is a, he's been playing like a quality quarterback. <laughs> it's the most <laughs> reluctant. Because <laughs> I'm just damn, I'm knock my damn mic off the off the desk. But but it's just because it pains me to actually admit it. Like where he's playing very very well. Like he's not making terrible decisions. Um, he's getting his receivers the ball. Mike Evans is looking like he's 
25 years old still. Like, he's just it's, not aging. They was wondering if he still was going to crack 1K, and it's nah. looking like he's going to easily <laughs> get there. He looked like he's, like, going to get it better this year or easier this year than he did last year with Brady. So, mm-hmm. you know, he, he, he looks good. Um, they're two and zero, like you said, surprisingly. Like, I mean, I knew that the I knew that the Vikings weren't going to be as good as last year, but I still didn't expect them to lose to the Bucks. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, the Bears. I'm they, sure they they come in next. I, about, <laughs> I was about to say, I'm sure that we got one of those up there too. But uh, but yeah, no, he looks good. I'm not gonna lie, he definitely looks good. Yeah, and look, I'm, I'm gonna do a fast follow on that overreaction or reality. The Bucks are the team to beat in the NFC South. Uh the Bucks. So we're talking about we're talking Bucks, uh Bucks, Falcons, Saints, Carolina Falcons, Saints. Yep. I say the Saints. No, I say, I say the Saints still. I agree. I, th- I think I think that's a that's a big overreaction to me. I yeah. think the Saints cleared that team mm-hmm. easily. But look, let Baker go into the Superdome and, <laughs> and do some wild. I'll come up here and be the first one to apologize because I think Baker sucked. I think it, I thought he but sucked. I thought he sucked, and he proved me wrong week after week. So look, I, I got nothing to say right now, bro. I thought Baker sucked when he was on the Browns in his "quote unquote" prime. I still thought he sucked. So like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. He's having a little like later in his career resurgence when he came back. But I remember like when he came back last year. He got traded to the Rams, and, like, the next day... Flew there with the playbook and then beat the Raiders. <laughs> well, had, like, a game-winning drive. Like, yeah. in in that moment, I'm not going to lie, I was rooting for Baker. Because, like, that's Yeah, you a, have to. That's a that crazy a, story. It was a wild story, bro. That's the type of stuff that, like, he would have went there and got whooped. I don't know if he gets his mm. opportunity in Tampa Bay. But it's like, no. he goes there, wins the game on, like, one day notice. Like, now, like you said, having, like, Almost a mini career resurgence in Tampa Bay. Granted, they played what looks to be two subpar teams in Minnesota and Chicago, but two wins are two wins, and it's hard to win in the NFL. It's bro, what's killing me though, and I guess it was the same with this year and last year with the Seahawks and Geno Smith. It's like, bro, these dudes whole offseason, all the reports are like, ah, this. They're about to tank for Caleb. Like, the quarterback is terrible. He's in a huge competition with Kyle Trask. Like, same with Gino. He was in a competition with – what I don't even know what buddy – Drew Locke. Drew Locke. <laughs> the one – yeah. Ugh. yeah. <laughs> and then they come out and they start hooping. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just, like, the low expectations and there's not a lot of pressure. And they've been looking good. The Bucks been looking way better than pretty much everybody thought they was going to look. Probably even Bucks fans. Yeah, I'm probably y'all yeah, didn't even think I was gonna be this good. Oh, de- yeah, definitely not. Um, I'm gonna keep this one real simple, real simple. Overreaction or reality? Justin Fields is cooked. <laughs> oh, this is year. This is year three. Right, they, they, you know, in the past, it's O line issues. It's still O line issues. He didn't have weapons. They're improved. They're at least improved. You can't say they were on the same tier as they were last year because DJ Moore is on the team. So it's at least better. The film don't look great. Actually, that's an understatement. The film looks awful. Yeah, yeah, it looks, that's better. <laughs> it looks egregious, bro. Decision making is like exceptionally slow. Mechanics, I know you were talking about his mechanics in the group or earlier. You don't think they look good as a former quarterback yourself. It, overall, bro. I almost want to say reality. I'm going to lean if, like, it was a scale of 0 to 100 and anything above 50 was reality. I'm at, like, a 48. <laughs> like, with <laughs> close. Solely because I do think the wins aren't that good. Like, Chase Claypool still being, like, in your top receiving rotation, like arguably number two option, like is 
Uh, Komet is run of the mill tight end. Um, and like I said, the O line still leaves a, a lot to be desired. And the play calling this year feels like they're trying to take him out of his comfort zone. He does not have nearly the rushing attempts that he had um, in the in the last season, which kind of propelled him to this level where people were coming into this season being like, this is the year. This feels about to take off because he's going to run for 1,000 yards and throw for 3,000 or something like that. It's like in the first two games, he's only rushed 13 times. In the bear in the Bucks game yesterday, he only ran the ball four times for three yards. Like that was where he was at his best. So I think there's still other factors at work, but individually, there's a lot that he's not doing right, which is making it hard to think that it's gonna come around. And like again, we're now into the third year of tape. You, there's got to be something like you can see when people don't have weapons or when there's issues, like there's something to work with from a passing perspective. There is a lot to, to be left or a lot left to be desired when you watch Justin Fields play, even with the upgraded weapons he's got this year. So I'm still like I say overreaction by a hair, but we we reach in that territory where we need to start these conversations. I I think that <clears throat> so first of all I just, just want to say like I I think the weapons are good enough for him to not be this bad. I think the weapons are, are I think that's fair. I think the weapons are definitely good enough for him not be this bad. Like we saw Trevor Lawrence, granted it's Trevor Lawrence like generational prospect was always supposed to be like this quarterback. We saw Trevor Lawrence with Christian Kirk, who at the time everyone was like, oh my God, this crazy overpaid is your wide receiver one. Zay Jones, who's never, like, I think he's a receiver, but nobody ever really seemed like, wow, great weapon. Zay Jones. Evan Ingram was literally like a, a cast off. Right, throw away from New York. Literally. And it's like he had a good second half of the season. Um, and like the offense did well. Like, you know what I mean? The weapons were not the greatest, but Trevor Lawrence made the Good. Like Christian yeah. Kirk was an 1100 yard receiver that had like eight touchdowns. Like, they did good. Mm-hmm. So, like, if your quarterback is that guy and Justin Fields was drafted high enough to be like that guy as far as being a franchise quarterback, you should make your weapons better than what they are. And it's like DJ Moore, I think, is a really good receiver. Mm-hmm. I think Darnell, Mo- Darnell Mooney is a really underrated receiver. Like, I don't think he's great, but I think he's a solid NFL receiver. Cole Komet, like, again, average tight end. Like, all the yeah, tight, right. all them tight ends are the same to me. They're the same, They're the same <laughs> person, different fonts. Like, same as that person. Uh, O-line slightly upgraded. Like, I just think he doesn't – he doesn't do enough for me. Like, we see in the plays, and, and, like, you could look it up on Twitter. You could type in just Justin Field. I'm pretty sure it would be the first couple of videos that pop up. He just processes stuff way too slow for me. Like, mm-hmm. he hits the top of his drop, and you have – open receiver coming across the middle or open receiver receiver going to the flat. And it's just like, he waits, 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 then tries to throw it. And at that time he's either getting hit or like that receiver is not open anymore. He'll reach the top of the drop. And the first read's not there. He's taking forever to get to get to the second read, or he's taking forever to get to the check down at that point. It's like, bro, just live to play another down, hit the check down, hit the open receiver, hit your second read. He's just not doing that. He'll just wait, wait, wait. The pocket is there. The pocket is open. Like, I'm telling you, if you look it up on Twitter, you can see it. The pocket, he's sitting in the pocket. He has a, plenty of time to throw the ball. And he just takes off and he tries to run and gets sacked. Or, like, ran to- into the pocket that was collapsing. Literally. Like, ran straight forward into the defender. It's like, bro, that's not on the O line. So, like, the people, you can't say, like, oh, he doesn't have time to throw. He doesn't have, like, he has plenty. If you like, if you know what you're looking for in a quarterback, like as far as evaluating a quarterback, he has plenty of time to throw in some in some of these uh, in some of these situations. And he's just not making the right decision, and I think it's because a lot of people, like you've seen a lot of people talking about how his drop back is pretty slow, which I which it is. I would like for him to speed that up a little bit. But even when he hits the top of his drop, he just he's not reading the defense fast enough. He's not mm-hmm. processing things fast enough in order to be like a, a good NFL quarterback. So 
Like I said, I think the weapons are good enough. The play calling does suck. I'm not going to lie. The play calling is absolutely terrible. It's not doing him any favors. But he's right. not showing me enough quarterback flashes to make me think that he's going to be great if they were to get a new OC. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. Trevor, as bad as uh, wasn't it, Urban Meyer was, Trevor, like, you still, still saw the arm talent. Like, I, like you still looked at Trevor like, All right, if he just gets the worst quarterback in the NFL out of here, he'll be at least – a solid quarterback fields if it's not his rushing ability like last year he doesn't show me flashes that's like i he can be a great quarterback if he just gets a new oc so as far as cooked ah oh, I, I i lean reality i i really do like if you're like if you say all right it's 50 the, the limit and you're on 48 i'm on like 52 like okay. i'm like i'm like a little bit over and leaning towards cook but again you can still have hope it's that de- obviously it's still time it's still hope but at some point you have to show me something to, right. to prove to me that you're a good enough nfl quarterback to be a franchise guy because Right now, I, I don't see it throwing the ball. Obviously, he's a great athlete, but throwing the ball, reading defenses, he's not showing me that right now. Yeah, but look, the uh, to calling that screen pass, first of all, I, I don't know. It's screen after screen after screen, bro. It's just so much screens. But to call a screen. It's like Madden. <laughs> right. To call that screen, <laughs> he's in his own end zone is criminal low key kind of because like <laughs> you're not even doing it in space but also to throw it is <laughs> crazy so they, go hand in, like, they go hand in hand you don't, you don't have put to the throw ball it. in the dirt and just like live to play another down like why are we forcing that ball and that's what i mean like if he if bro if he just doesn't make those decisions if he hits the check down. If he say he like he's making the right reads and they're just not the offense is just not moving, then I feel like you can put it on the OC. But it's like he's the OC is not doing him any favors and he's also not making the right decisions in the first like as well. So like it kind of goes hand in hand in my opinion. It's a a consistent trend with Ohio State quarterbacks who it just seems like none of them can really pan out in the NFL. I mean, if you're looking at this century, um, none of them have records above 500 in the NFL, and Justin Fields is included in that list. That includes guys like Troy Smith, Terrell Pryor, Cardell Jones, um, and then rest in peace, Dwayne Haskins as well. Uh, but I, I don't know. It, it, he did not struggle passing like this at Ohio State, and obviously – the level of weapons and just all general talent on that team, you're never going to see that at the NFL level. Mm-hmm. So obviously that is understandable, but man, it is, it's really as a fantasy owner, frustrating to, to Me watch, too. but I mean, we in the same boat, but just really, it's like, it's perplexing his play, the play calling, I don't understand. Like I said, three rushing yards in a game. That's what I, I don't think he had a game in single digit, digit rushing yards all of last season. Um, and was that, how did I say four carries would also be his lowest uh, carry attempts for the entirety of last season. And it's not like this game was ever really so far out of hand to where like you had to abandon the run game. Like, 27 to 17 final score. It was very ample opportunity to run the football to get him going. Right. It's like if you're not even going to make him a threat to run, you're only making it that much more difficult for him to then have to sit back and try to play as a pocket passer, which is just not his specialty, bro. So I guess I said I think there's a lot that he struggles with that is definitely not being helped. If anything, it's really being hindered by the play calling right now, but it's getting scary. <laughs> it's getting scary for him. 100%. Um, another team which shocked a lot of people fought hard to almost be 2-0. Um, they end up getting the taking the loss yesterday, but they gave the 49ers – a good run. So, overreaction or reality, 
the Rams are a playoff team this year. Oh, playoffs is tough. I mean, all right, let's think about it. We got in the NFC, <clears throat> Locks, Eagles, Cowboys, are the Eagles Niners. No, <laughs> Overreaction or reality? <laughs> Eagles. Based on the play, I don't know. Record. Uh, they, 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 don't look, they, they don't look good. I'm going to be honest. They don't look they good. They should be 0-2. Just low key. But they, they're going to make the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> Eagles, Cowboys, Niners. Um, I mean, besides Lions, Whoever wins the NFC South. <laughs> yeah, whoever wins Ooh. there. All right. Um, I think we got one of the what's the name teams. Like the. Lions fight, not fight. Right, but NFC North. Lions. Winner. That's five right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I can see it though, because the way they're playing, like the defense is playing better than I thought they were going to play. Now, granted, in the Niners game, Brock Purdy missed a couple of throws that should have been did. touchdowns. Like he Definitely. missed, I think Debo that should have been he a touchdown. Debo deep twice, I think. Yeah, and it was, a, I think it was one with IU too. Mm-hmm. So, like, he missed a couple of throws that definitely should have been touchdowns. Like, their secondary is questionable. I'm be honest. Their secondary could be had a little bit. But at the end of the day, you still have Aaron Donald. Like, they still just have playmakers on that team. And then the offense, Matthew Stafford is looking great. Like, even the pick that he thrown, I remember, I forgot who it was, was breaking it down, like, explaining how it wasn't his fault that the receiver, like, broke it upfield when he should have ran the route a little bit flatter um, and let the, the corner undercut it a little bit. But, like, Matthew Stafford's playing great. We got Puka Puka Cup over here. That's mm-hmm. just like, bro, stepping in against the Niners defense, and this is not even like fantasy talk, but like, just as a think, think about it as a rookie going up against the 49ers to earn twenty targets and catch fifteen of them. Like targets are earned. Like yeah, you don't, and, and you know the Niners game plan because he's coming off of Week One where he got fifteen targets and caught ten of them. He's like, like you're not sneaking up on him, right? Like, you got him playing great. Like, Grant Matthew Stafford is helping him out a lot. But he, like, credit to that rookie. You got Tutu Atwell is playing pretty solid. Like, and then you got Kyron Williams, who looks <laughs> 10 times better than Cam Akers. Like, they have – their young players are just stepping up. That's what I yeah. will say. Their, their young players are stepping up, and they're performing right away rather than needing time to develop and, like, be – could be good later on down the line. So, I mean, right now they're, they're not an easy win for anyone any single week, week of the season. So I could definitely see them making a playoff team. I'm making a playoff. I don't. I don't think it's an overreaction to say that. I agree. I I think it's a real reality for this team. And like, when you think back to before this season started, Cooper Cup hamstring, he goes on IR. You know, Aaron Donald already flirted with retirement. The report came out. Matthew Stafford feels like the old guy in the locker room. Feels like he can't connect with his teammates. Thinks they're on their phone all the time. He doesn't know what to do. It seemed like this is about to be a wash of a season. Like, there's going to be another there was bad trade year. talks with Matthew Stafford. Right. Like, this seemed like, again, what, what we expected. They went out. They built the super team. They got the ring. And you, you deal with the repercussions. Like, you can't pay anybody anymore. Mm-hmm. So, like, that just was going to be life for the Rams. But here they are at one and one. I said, this Niners game was close Granted, like you said, Brock missed throws that maybe could have put it a little bit further out of out of reach earlier, but the Rams were like fighting the whole way through um and, and giving them everything that they have. Puka looks like genuinely looks like Cooper Cup 2.0. So like when Cooper Cups comes back, got two Cooper Cups. <laughs> right. Like I don't I don't know what that's gonna look like, but the volume, the efficiency is there. Um, which is what Puka was known for um, in college was one of the more, um, I think he was actually was the most efficient receiver in this this draft class. Um, I think in terms of uh, targets um, and receptions, but um, they just, like you said, they have a lot of young guys. I think it feels like they took those expectations of them being bad and they, like Dion said, it's personal, and they're they're playing like it. And look, they went out week one against that Seahawks team, and they kind of beat them up. Like the game was not close. Nah. And this is look again. I, I like the way that stuff like this works out because it gives you the context. Seattle then goes 
losing a game by 17 points, three scores to this Rams team, and then goes on the road to Detroit. Questionable hold there that doesn't get called in in uh, overtime, but at mm. the end of the day, they go on the road in Detroit and walk off touchdown on the first possession of overtime and beat the Lions, who just beat the Chiefs. So it's like, if we're looking at it from that perspective, bro, this Rams team is at worst. They are competitive. Absolutely. So I think they could mess around and we look at, you know, I think Seattle was a team a lot of people looked at being borderline, you know, almost a lock for the playoffs in the NFC because you don't think they're going to win the division with San Francisco there, but they're obviously a great step ahead of what we thought the Rams were going to be or the Cardinals. We know what they did last year. They seem to be right there. Doesn't seem to be that free for them right now. Um, and with how the Rams are playing, they could very easily be that team um, that that is the second playoff team out of the NFC West. And, and who knows? Maybe you have three teams in the playoffs out of the NFC West um, if they're they're playing to that level. But yeah, I, I, I'm very surprised with this start for the Rams, but. I'm interested. I'm very, very interested and intrigued to see how this plays out and what they're going to do now when Cup comes off of IR. Was that week five? Because um, mm-hmm. there were thoughts about keeping him clean, keeping him healthy, trying to preserve him for other years or keeping him healthy so they can trade him and get max value and try to recoup some draft capital for the rebuild. But they get to week five and this team is three and two, four and one, maybe like. Maybe you just play, like just play it out, because like who knows? I think, uh, I think, well, I mean, at least they're in a really good spot as far as like Puka being able to step in right there, because you don't have to rush Cooper cut back. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like he, you can genuinely take your time and make sure he is like one hundred percent healthy. At the end of the day, he had a hamstring injury and had a re-aggravation of a hamstring injury. He's, I believe, thirty years old, a wide receiver. We saw what happened with Keenan Allen last year, missed a. No, like if you're like 24, that hamstring injury what put you out maybe a week or two. Mm-hmm. Like you're being that old, like he missed what 10 weeks of the season, something crazy like that. So I mean, like you have the luxury of being able to, to rest him, and then when he comes back, if he's 100 percent healthy, now that offense genuinely looks scary because now it's just not Cooper Cup or bust. Now it's Cooper, you got Puga, you got Tutu Atwell playing well. It's like you have a bunch of different weapons, and then Kyron Williams out the backfield has been a really good receiving back. So you did you definitely have the luxury of uh making sure he gets 100 percent healthy. For sure. Last couple ones we got here. Um, Going to pivot over to the Thursday night game with the Vikings. Uh, overreaction or reality, this is the last year we'll see Kirk Cousins as the Vikings quarterback. His contract is up after this year, right? Um, Let me double check. I, that sounds right. Uh... You know, it's crazy because it really wouldn't be on him if it was like he's actually been playing very, very well. Like that game was on primetime for everyone that's like Kirk Cousins can't ball on primetime, which I'm one of them because it's funny. I don't genuinely believe that. I'm sure he like I'm sure that's not a genuine thing. Like, oh, it's primetime. He's scared of the big moment. Like, no, but it was on primetime against the Eagles. He played well. I believe he threw for 300 plus four mm-hmm. touchdowns. Like, yeah. He played very well. Um, and I don't, I don't, I don't know if that's what they really need though. Like, I don't, I don't look at the Vikings team and I don't look at their shortcomings, even when it come to last year in the playoffs. And I don't think like, man, Kirk just got to go. Like, I don't think that's normally the problem. Like their defense sucks right. year in and year out. That defense sucks. They have now last year they had an all right running game. That was like, ah, they have zero running game now. Like with Dalvin gone. Madison is not as good as Dalvin. Like, I, I don't care. What all Bro, those, those, he looks bad. He looks like a career backup. That's what he looks like. He looks like <laughs> a guy, <laughs> excuse me, who was backing up Dalvin Cook for years. But it's crazy because, like, when he came in, it was like, oh, shoot. This guy could <laughs> cool. Bro, but it's like, that's, it, bro, he comes in. Nobody's really expecting him to do much. Like, as far as defense-wise, you're not really game-planning for Madison. And he plays well. And normally it's against, like, the Lions or some other bottom-feeder type defense. 
when you're the guy, it is different. Like when you're the guy, the featured back, I feel like it's a little bit different. And he just doesn't look like someone who's capable of being that back. Um, that's probably why he was so happy backing up Dalvin. Like he was not complaining. Like he was like, "Yeah, I'm chilling. I, I get the same dreads as Dalvin. Like we're gonna do, we're gonna sure. look the same. Like we gonna be <laughs> we gonna be chilling." But no, nah, he just doesn't. They they long story short, sure, they have zero running game. They have zero defense, and you basically have Kirk just dropping back and saying, "Win us the game. You and Jettas win us the game." So I don't I don't think that Kirk is really the problem. So I think it's a bit of an overreaction. But I could I only reason I can see it happening is if they want to go into like some sort of rebuild with a younger quarterback with like a rookie quarterback. Say like they really lose a lot of games to get somewhat of a top pick. Maybe they trade up for a quarterback. Then I can kind of see them doing that, um, just going the younger route. I I agree. I think that's an overreaction. I think that it's not on Kirk. I don't think Kirk has been at any point like clear cut standalone. This is the reason why our season is what it is. This is the reason why we lost in the playoffs last year. Like it's not cut and dry. You can just pinpoint that on him, and definitely not this Thursday night game. You want to go back to week one against the Bucks? He, he made some plays down the stretch where the pick towards the end, like you just – you can't have that in those situations. But in this game, bro, the Vikings had 28 rushing yards. What, what, what more can he do? He threw for 364 and four touchdowns, no picks, with pressure in his face nonstop, nonstop pressure in his face. This O-line is bad, and granted, they are very, very injured right now. Uh, was it the center, Bradbury, I think his name mm-hmm. is, didn't play on Thursday night. Um, to like, But we, we saw what they were last year. Them against the Cowboys was one of the like hardest things to watch. Just like Kirk just getting mauled every single drop back and watching it back on quarterback on Netflix was worse because now you've got him on the mic like, oh, every time he gets <laughs> it. Um, so this O-line, they like they need to shore it up. I think that this is only even something to think about because it almost feels like the windows aren't going to align well enough. Exactly. With like – it almost may make sense to move off of Kirk, not pay him, draft, I don't know, find a way, trade a couple of picks, whatever you got to do, trade up, and maybe you can get a guy like Drake May, somebody who's young, has experience at the college level, can maybe come in and, I mean, you're already going to pair him with the best receiver in football, um, the highest paid tight end in football. <laughs> Um, like he'll have weapons from day one. Jordan Addison is Addison, great, yeah. right? In the first two games, so it's like maybe that's the play there instead of giving Kirk another 40 to 50 million dollars a year. Because again, it, it just also doesn't help. Statue quarterbacks do not help your O line at all. Not to mm-hmm. say that it's to remove blame, because at the end of the day. He's getting pressure immediately. Like it's not much you can any quarterback can do, but if you can be a little mobile, like help, like let me help you help you. Like I, right. I know that pressure is coming. You at least then can do some stuff schematically. Like let's do some rollouts. Let's do some sprint outs. Let's have some naked boots. Something to get him out in space where you can cut the O line's work in half. Like. I just need you to block this side. I just need mm. you to pin this guy. We don't have to create a full perfect pocket. Um, so I, the way that this season progresses, if this doesn't, you know, this ship doesn't get righted and again, it's not going to be Kirk's fault. And I don't want him to become the scapegoat here because that's going to be, I think, what happens. Like the media is going to try to spin this on. Kirk Cousins is going to be like, we know what he is. He's not an elite quarterback. You know, we, we've seen what they were able to do. They had the fluky year last year. You know, it. they feel like this is the team's cap with Kirk Cousins when I think it's just indicative of, like you said, 
the defense is just not good enough, bro. This Eagles team was any I could have ran for probably at least 45, 50 yards behind that offensive line. Mm-hmm. They're getting moved around like crazy. The defensive coordinator, I don't know what he's doing, bro. They're coming out and pounding the ball. You're coming out in one linebacker in the box. Like, schematically, their defense looks bad. From a talent pr- perspective, they're devoid at a lot of positions outside of guys, um, you know, like, uh, like on the name, Harrison Smith. Um, so it's like, there's a lot of issues here that I think, unfortunately, will get pinned on Kirk if this p- continues to progress this way. But I don't know. They'll, they'll have some questions if they get to the end of the season, they don't make the playoffs. Kirk is a free agent. Like, what do you do? It's it's a weird spot, but like you said, I, I, you just the blame shouldn't be on Kirk because you put Kirk on the Niners, they can win the Super Bowl. You put Kirk on the Eagles, they got a chance to win the Super Bowl. You put Kirk mm-hmm. in Dallas, like you just put him in a better situation with an actual O line and weapons and a defense. Like Kirk is a, an above average quarterback. He's a good quarterback. Yeah. He's not great. He's not elite. But he's a good quarterback. He's so, one I mean, of those those handful of guys who will forever be looking through the glass at the elite tier of quarterbacks. But he's right there. He, right, he, right. he first in line. If they ever, you know, <laughs> drop some people out, yeah. you got the next deli ticket. Just, <laughs> right outside of top there. ten. Yeah. But uh but yeah, but yeah, it's it's it, it depends on how the season goes too. Cause if they continue on this path and they're really in position to get a top pick, or at least in position to trade up for a top pick like you know what i mean then it it gets interesting and i can see a world where they move off of kirk and just and just go younger because like you said the timelines just don't match up right and look this would not be a uh a bad year for that this qb prospect room for this upcoming draft class is panning out to look like it has some for real studs in it Obviously, Caleb Williams was the name coming into this season, but my man like Shadur, <laughs> right? But like, like I mentioned, you have Drake May. Shadur is coming up very quickly, and he looks like he can play just as well as anybody in the country. Um, with again the added athleticism, like Spencer Rattler is going to be in this draft class too. Jaden Daniels at LSU, Michael Penix over at Washington. Um, even Riley Leonard at that Duke Quinn Ewers potentially could come out. Like there's a lot of names. There's a lot, a lot of names, a lot of options to where they may find a guy they like that they can snag later in the first round. Or like you said, can don't have to trade up. Cause you're not going to get whoever's getting the number one pick They're They want Caleb. <laughs> so it's like, you ain't getting that one, but you, you can maybe find a way to get Shador or Drake may, or one of these other top three guys. Um, and now you have a lot of more capital to go and spend to put an O line in front of him to protect him, or put a couple more playmakers on the defensive side of the ball, so that you're not getting ran on for 200 and some yards. And DeAndre Swift is showing the Lions organization why they shouldn't have cut him in the first place. But oh my god, yo, yeah. how many how many teams in the league you think wouldn't trade their number one pick if they or, got or, it? I, I, or no, 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 let me rephrase that. How many teams do you think in the league would trade it? Like, obviously, like the Chiefs, like the Chiefs, don't need them. yeah, like, the Chiefs, the Bills, the Bengals, the Bills, Eagles, the Ravens, the Eagles, anybody that already paid their quarterback. Yeah, all right, take out contracts. Say there's a, a way to move off of them. I don't know somehow. There's oh, to... <laughs> okay. Dallas, so as a that... Dallas fan, like, what's up? So yeah, say I don't win the Super Bowl this year. But it's not Dak's fault. Like he plays at I, but the Niners are just better or something. I don't know. Whatever. You moving off of Dak for for Caleb? The hype scares me a little bit too much. <laughs> like I just I like that. Though, I, I know, but bro, it, to me, uh, I feel like I'm gonna sound like an old head. We ain't never seen nobody do the stuff Mahomes do. So when I watch him play, and then I hear the talking heads be like, ah, he he could be like the next Mahomes. That grinds my gears like, bro, no, he can't be. No, he's no way. Nobody could be this guy. I feel like I'm somebody that watched Jordan play. You try to tell me LeBron is coming right. up. Like, but, 
realistically, it's like, I don't know. I, I feel like the upside is just so crazy. You would have to. Yeah. And if you're saying like contracts, not a, not a factor, you just bring them in. I mean, to be fair, that contract ended up, was it this year or next year? I think next year. Oh. Okay. Um, Cause they, um, that was a big deal with them bringing in, um, Oh, Trey Lance. Trey Lance was like, yo, y'all haven't sorted out his contract extension yet. Mm -hmm. Um, See, I'm pulling up his contract right now, but I think he's a free agent in 2025. Yeah. So he has one more year after this year. Um, But yeah, I think aside from the Chiefs, probably the Bengals, Bills, Bills, Chargers. Ravens, I think. I think the Dolphins will move off of Tua. Now, and don't speak from a fan like he ain't got no arm. Like, just think about the Dolphins. Think about, like, your guy's hooping right now. Yo, could you imagine <laughs> Yo, Caleb Williams and Tyreek Hill? Deep. Bro. It's, I mean, that would be like, the Chiefs. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> <the Chief. laughs> no, I'm in my head like, bro, that's literally Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> have we kid. ever seen this before? Yes, we have. <laughs> <laughs> and it was great. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, like maybe, yeah, five or six guys that if you threw contracts out the window, you just would have to like just try to upside. Make, yeah. make him beat out your guy. <laughs> Let me For see real. it. Uh, I just it's just funny to think about, man, because the hype is crazy. But he's, bro, when I watch him play, he's legitimately like that, bro. He makes some throws where I'm like, the just the arm talent is insane. Like it's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, the yeah, the one that he had where he just like flicked his wrist and it went like sixty yards in the air. I was when he like, dropped the ball, right? Yeah, I was. But people don't realize how hard of a throw that is because he didn't step into the like he didn't step in off of fumbling the snap and just. Flick it and it's a 60 yard dot. Like, I don't know. Yeah, bro. And I wanted to be like, at first I looked at it, I was like, dude, wide open. Who are they playing? They playing some bum school. And I was like, <laughs> man, he did just throw that about 60, 65. It's <laughs> like, like, yeah. bro, that's kind of wild, wild, bro. It's crazy. A lot of people are always saying, like, yeah, he's the next Mahomes. He's way more athletic than Mahomes is. Like, he probably, obviously, he's not the thrower or he might not be the thrower, but like, he is like, a way more athletic as far as a runner than Mahomes is. So it's the hype to me is legit. I don't know. Like no one knows if it's ever going to, if it's going to pan out, like obviously no one can predict the future, but I think the hype at, at least is legit. That's fair. Uh, this I'm excited to see this draft class come into the league um, yeah. with these quarterbacks. And then with Marvin Harrison, because oh, oh my, my God. gosh, bro. If the if the Cardinals could really because they got the Texans pick, if they could really double up and get like Caleb and Marvin, that would be crazy. crazy. They're that set. would be insane. You got to get rid of Kyler, bro. What? Come on, bro. If the Cardinals get the, if the Cardinals are gonna get the first pick. They suck, but if the Cardinals get the first pick, do they Kyler, suck though? <laughs> do because that look that was the last the, one the, I was holding on to. Or do the Giants just suck? That we can talk about that. Yeah, that, that's the know. last one I got here. Overreaction or reality? Saquon is out for three weeks with no Saquon. Is this Giants team kind of cooked? Because <laughs> without without him yesterday, I don't know if they make that comeback. I think the Giants can miss the playoffs. Um, they are like I, I'll be the first one to admit it because I sat up here. And I was like, they might be a third team out of the NFC East to make the playoffs like last year. I was like, things break their way. They could jump the Cowboys in the NFC East. And no, they can't. No, that's this, bad. this team <laughs> is not what I thought they was going to be. And I'll be the first one to admit that I was wrong because real life, they should have lost this game. They should. I, I said, bro, I, after the first drive, this is like, this is, they're going to lose, bro. They look bad. Josh they, Dobbs looks way too good right now, bro. Bro, they started the season down sixty to nothing. <laughs> and come on, the two in six quarters of play were down sixty to nothing. Cowboys, that's still bad, but all right, cool. Cowboys, whatever. Right. Cardinals, Dobbs. Come on, bro. What are we talking about here, bro? 
Like they getting ran over, they getting dotted up, and just not and it had zero offense. Like nothing looked good at all. And you had all the special teams issues in the, in the Cowboys game. It's <laughs> like, bro, you're you're good at no phases of football <laughs> right now, bro. Yeah, it's just they 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 can miss the play. We talked about it. That that five teams, that's a lock. And then we didn't even bring up the Rams. We didn't even say the Seahawks. They can they can miss the playoffs for 100%. sure. They can miss the playoffs. But yeah, look, this I don't think that this they come back and win this game if Saquon Barkley is not there because um, he ends up with 17 carries for 63 yards and a rushing touchdown as well as getting six catches tied for the team lead in catches for 29 yards and a receiving touchdown as well. He's going to be out for the next three games, it sounds like, at least with his ankle sprain, which Bro's ankles just cannot stay healthy. Yeah, but it's sad, bro. In that three-game span, they go Niners, Seattle, Miami. And that's, oh, <laughs> that's, <they're> <laughs> that's at San Francisco, home against Seattle. Oh, they play Thursday. <laughs> oh, they're about to, bro, they're about to get cooked. Yeah. Nah. And then they go to Miami. And then, oh, my gosh, this is crazy. And then even when Barkley potentially is back, let's say they even, like, let's say they win one of those three games. Now you're looking at, uh, what is that, two and four, right? That would be six games. Yeah, two and four. Then they go to Buffalo on Sunday night football and then have a home matchup against the Commanders who still look good. Right. And then have to play the Jets, which technically is a home game, but they yeah. play in the same stadium. Then they go to Vegas, to Dallas, to Washington. They got to play Belichick. Like They're not. They're missing the playoffs. We don't, missing, gotta, missing the playoffs. We, we don't even got to necessarily go that far. I'm just talking about this initial stretch. There's three games that it sounds like you're going to be They'll, they without can go Saquon. Right. If very, very high likelihood. They are going to come out of this and be one and four. Nah, they're Giants are going to miss the playoffs. Like, it, they're good. No, Saquon, Saquon is the offense. Right. And, it, bro, I don't even want to say if because it's almost a win. But, like, they, I think fair shot, they might be able to beat the Seahawks. But I don't think they have a chance without Saquon against the Niners or the Dolphins. No, not at all. They're going to get destroyed by both of those. They're going to get blown out on Thursday. Yeah, they will. They will legitimately get blown out on Thursday. Seahawks, no Saquon. I think the Seahawks can win that game, and then Dolphins are going to absolutely destroy them. Right, like they 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 can definitely go winless. I'm gonna be honest. They go winless without Saquon. Saquon comes back. Who's say he's 100? percent Right, but like even still, you still got your 40 million dollar man. Why can't he get you a game? Oh no, this will th- this stretch right here. Is make or break. I don't, bro. I don't care that you don't have your running back. We got you, Darren Waller. We got you a couple of nice little slot guys. But regardless, you're forty million dollars, bro. Forty. You should, to, you should be able to make it work. Like you're, we paid you like that guy that can make it work. Make it work. Go ahead, bro. This stretch, make or break, bro. Well, they're locked in regardless. But it's just as far as the perception of Dan Jones. This is make or break, bro. And then no. it's 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 funny how it worked out too. Because I right, we paid you. We was doing Saquon dirty. All right, so if you're the guy and not Saquon, all right, let's see how you do it. Right, we, we should be Go straight ahead. right now. We like, should be good. We bro, ain't paid Saquon 40 M's, so yeah, you good. Go ahead. If I'm Saquon and we, we go through this stretch, let's say they call own 3 uh, he come back, whatever, the, the season kind of just falls apart. They tag Saquon next year. I'll retire. I'll walk away from the game of football before I play on this tag for the Giants, bro. And you're still paying Daniel Jones. Like that would be the so disres- The disrespect would be too. Like at some point, we, you got to put your foot down. And yeah, I know bro. that's that's another man's livelihood. And like I ain't gonna pocket watch. Like whatever he got to do, he got to do. But from the outside looking in, or if I was in his shoes, the disrespect was already too crazy this year. Because anybody that watches the Giants know. The offense goes as Saquon goes, and that was evident Absolutely. in this game. Once he got going, oh, my gosh, all of a sudden we can come back from down 21 points because he's the most explosive player on the offense. Still, regardless, you put the ball in his hands, probably one of the top five hardest to bring down people in the NFL. 
Absolutely. Another guy with that unique combination of elusiveness in size and strength. So for him to be playing on the franchise tag and to potentially be playing on the franchise tag again, when you gave some of his bread to a guy that you declined the fifth year option on, cause you didn't know if he could be the guy you was thinking about, maybe we're going to let him walk. Man, nah, he got 40 million. It's crazy, bro. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how this stretch goes. It's gonna. This is gonna tell a lot. This it, is gonna tell a lot. It sure is, bro. Cause the drop off, and no disrespect to Matt Breida, but he's not Saquon, and so, um, um, barring one of these receivers really stepping up, Isaiah Hodgins, Darius Slayton, Jalen Hyatt, Paris Campbell, like Darren Waller looked solid. You know, uh, yesterday, but somebody would need to break out in a big way, like a very big way. Otherwise, right. again, I, I would hope Giants brass and that front office learns very quickly what I think the rest of the NFL fans have known for multiple seasons now that Saquon is the offense, bro, and he should be treated like so. Absolutely. Crazy man, we'll see though. We will see. We'll see soon too. Thursday, <laughs> very, 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 very soon. Uh, that's cr- I didn't even realize the first Monday night game already tipped off. On why did it start so early? Because it's a doubleheader. Yeah. Oh, that's they, that's crazy. It started at like five. <laughs> it's bro, it's so weird how they do that, bro. It haven't played at the same time. I'm be having to watch one on the TV, one on my phone. It's so weird. Dang. Saints is about to be, bro. Derek Carr is questionable. I'm not hearing it from anybody. Bro, Derek Carr is a solid QB, bro. He's he's literally average. It's funny. It's funny how like how this whole discussion goes because like you're pushing the Derek Carr sucks agenda agenda, and all we're saying is he's just average. Like we're not even like he's good. Like that's too just, far. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's too far. He can't be just good enough. No. <laughs> I watched this man overthrow Devontae Adams how many times last year. <laughs> he only beat like I know we didn't really talk about them because any of the teams that only play one game, uh, because it's not the whole point was to go over the teams that played in week two. But we we spent a lot of time talking about how Ryan Tannehill looked borderline unplayable in the NFL, gifted that Saints offense three free possessions. And they only won that game by one point and had to make big plays to seal the game. But hey, their car threw a couple dots. You know, they threw the, the, the nine ball to Shahid. You saw the you saw the clip where he was like, bro, g- give me a goal ball. You seen that clip? I, you, I did. <laughs> he's like, bro, give me a goal ball. That's Derek Carr right there, calling his shot and hitting the throw. Dime sealed the game. Come on, man. So I put some respect on my guy, man. He gonna he gonna listen. I, he helped hey, listen. He helped Devontae Adams for you go crazy a little bit. I know he pissed you off. He gonna help Chris Olave go crazy for me. That's all I'm gonna say. He gonna he gonna hit Chris Olave on them nine balls. That's all I need. Hey, he better hope he don't lose to this this Panthers team tonight. He just tied it up. It's just I think it's about to be the end of the first quarter, but it's three to three. Yeah, no chance he loses. Let them man. mess around and lose to this Panthers team, bro. There's Actually, no I, I can go bigger. Let them mess around and lose this division of Baker. First of all, I know a lot of Saints fans. I'm going to be on y'all head because that's crazy. That's personally, crazy. personally, I couldn't allow that. <laughs> <laughs> Saints was supposed to, this was supposed to be a cakewalk for them as far as like division wise. So like they have no excuse right. at all. Yeah. Zero, zero excuse. Oh, man. I don't know if you saw what uh, your boy got paid today, though. Vando. Ooh. Oh yeah, I seen that. I was so happy for my guy, man. Yeah, now get a corner it. three, get a corner <laughs> shot, bro. Damn, you getting all this money? You could work in your corner three. Bro. That's all I need from you. I need you to be, I need you to be playable <laughs> in, in some of these series because your defense is too good to be on the bench. Yeah, but I'm happy my man's got paid, man. Good he need, he need to get them Chris Brickley Brickley workouts, bro. Get that jumper right. He need to get his shooting badges, bro. Just corner specialist. That's all you need. That's the only badge you need, bro. Catch and shoot corner specialist. You don't need no. You don't need a dribble. Man, if bro, if I was like, if I was a six eight, like an athletic defender, bro, I'd be the best role player in the world. Like, you tell me, all I do is like play defense, it hit one shot, and maybe cut. 
Oh my god, you'll never hear nothing from me. I'll be in the gym all day, corner three, corner three, corner three. It would be, bro. I would be like Steph Curry from the corner and like trash everywhere else. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but like in that corner, though, you can't leave me. I'm be not one hot spot. That's all I need. Hey, literally, bro. I'm good. I could just be in one corner, the right. Put me in the right corner. Right. I don't. I don't even need both of them. Nah, just put me in one, bro. I don't. I'm not trying to confuse the point guard, bro. You know what icon I am. I'm always <laughs> <Yeah>. in this <inside. laughs> side. You will always dot me. I'm not moving from this spot. Like 2K Pro am. I'm yeah. not moving from this spot. <laughs> um, I see people talking about it on Twitter. Would you start uh, Vando or Rui at the four come the regular season? Uh, honestly. I like the punch Rui gives us off the bench, though. I would agree. I like I, that a lot. Yeah, I start Vando because I, I I like the punch Rui, Rui gives us off the bench. But, like, obviously, and it's only regular season, too. So, like, come playoff time, obviously, the lines are going to change. It's going to be missed. They're going to, like, right. mix and match all the time. But regular season, yeah, give me Vando. Yeah. Yeah. Good for him. Four-year, 48 mil. Got himself a bag, man. Got himself a bag. Um. And we, we do also got to touch on this. Um, Giannis says some, I don't know if I want to say questionable, but he says some interesting stuff in an interview talking about, you know, he's a, well, basically what he was like, he's a, he's a winner first and that he's wherever he is, whether that's Milwaukee or somewhere else, you know, he wants, wants winning to be at the forefront of what that organization is doing. So obviously we in the deadest part of the NBA offseason. So the rumors are going crazy that he's got one foot out the door. Do what do they need to do to keep Giannis happy? But it's unfortunate that that happens with really every small market team that ends up with a superstar that those rumors are going to get pushed and sometimes pretty much out of thin air, which is basically what this is. Cause I don't think he necessarily said anything crazy or wrong. It's just a fact like, he can't necessarily control where he's at for his whole career. Maybe, he, I don't know, something goes wrong and he has to go somewhere else or they trade him, whatever the case may be. Um, so he just is saying at the end of the day, he wants to be competing for titles. But I don't know how you feel. You think new head coach, right? Obviously, Boonholzer had the issues. They're coming off of an embarrassing playoff run. I don't know. You know, his contract is up soon. They go out and they don't perform this year. You know, Brooke is getting old. I don't know. Just what, what, what do you feel? What do you think the temperature is um, in Milwaukee right now? Sounds like he's a Laker. That's what it sounds yeah. like to me. <laughs> sounds like he's a Laker. That's what it sounds like. Nah, let me, uh, I think it's two things. I think it's one, either he is trying to have leverage in order to get like a super half. I mean, he's probably gonna get the, however many much money he asked for, regardless. Mm-hmm. But just add a little, you know, what I'm saying a little bit of leverage in there, just to make sure, like when his time does come to like re up on that contract, he's gonna make sure he gets the tip top, like the max he could get. Mm-hmm. Or he's genuinely serious, like bro, if we are not winning championships or we're not in a position to win championships, I'm gone. Like, I, like I've already made money. I've already have all the individual awards. I've actually won a championship already, but I right. want to win multiple. Like, so I mean, he could legitimately mean that, and I don't, I don't think it's like, oh, he has his eye on the Lakers or Golden State. Like, I don't think it's gen- like he's looking at a team and it's like I want to get to here. I don't think he's one of those guys, and a lot of those foreign players are like this to where like, and they don't care about being in LA or in Miami. Like, I don't think he's like that. That really matters. Um, I genuinely just think that like maybe he just wants to win. And if Milwaukee's just not in a position to win, then I'm fine with leaving. I'm fine with going to wherever's going to give me the best chance to win. So I, th- I think it's genuine. But I also think that if Milwaukee just contends, he's perfectly fine with staying in Milwaukee. That's fair. That's fair. Um, that's, I think it's only even getting this much media attention because he's in a small market and because we're in the absolute most dead mm-hmm. part of the offseason where it's like we're like – Overreaction or reality. (laughs) Right. (laughs) We're almost exactly two weeks from the start of the first preseason games, uh, which is, oh, my gosh, NFL and NBA on at the same time is so, so peak, bro. It's so peak, bro. I can't wait. Um, But, like, 
it's always going to happen with the small market teams, bro, because dude's got to stir something up. Like you said, literally, because I guarantee you, it's going to be a first take segment. Do Giannis want to go to the Lakers? <laughs> what is it going to take for Giannis to be a New York Nick? Right, bro, Lakers, Knicks, Warriors. Instantly. Right. That's all it is. It's a but, shame. It is a shame. It's a whole bunch of nothing, though. But yeah, it's just because it's the dead of the dead of the off season. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's probably it's really probably nothing. Like he'll probably just like it's funny because like all this stuff will happen and he'll like just resign on Milwaukee whether they're gonna be contenders or not. Like they could probably be <laughs> that bag is that bag is crazy. <laughs> that bag yeah. is too wild. They say like they stars say stuff like this and then they'll sign. They'll sign the extension. And then maybe ask for a trade later, but they will sign that extension. That money is too crazy to pass up on. Yeah, because he probably let me double check real quick, but he probably eligible for well, he definitely eligible for the the largest contract in NBA history. Yeah, he's gonna get something stupid. Um, super max contract. Why I type in super and super saiyan came up? Giannis onto the Kupo super saiyan. No, I'm dead. <clears throat> That's wild. Um, nice contract eligibility. That is crazy. So go back to this one. Oh my gosh, five year, three hundred and thirty four million. That don't even make sense, bro. What do you even need that much money for, bro? Well, we're going to live to see the first billion dollar contract one day. Oh, yeah. That's going to be nuts. <laughs> bro. That's going to be crazy. Tom <laughs> Sampson, <laughs> four years, $1.2 billion. To bounce a ball and put it in the hoop. What a crazy world we live in, bro. Crazy. That's wild. We only, uh, what is this? It's like 35 ish days from the start of the regular season. We like, Look like 15 ish days, 16 days from the start of the preseason. So we come in the NBA pods will be making their return in due time. Probably in a week or so, we'll have to come and do some full previews for the Eastern Conference, Western Conference. Might see if I can get some of my my Spurs connects. Come on, we could talk a little Wemby action. Okay. Um, yeah, because I need the clicks. Okay. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> Uh, but nah, because for real, for real, I'm going to be at Mad Spurs games this year because I need to see it with my own two eyes. I'll, sl- I'll slide up there. You know what I'm saying? I'll have a little bit more free time now. I'll slide up there for a game or two. Gots to, gots to. But with that, that's going to do it for today's episode of the Off the Glass podcast. Real quick hitter right before we log out. Steelers game hasn't kicked off yet. Like I said, well, y'all listening to this, you already know what the score is, but Final score prediction. You already said Steelers are going to win. Let's hear what the score is going to be. Dang. Ugly dog fight. Um, but we're going to gut it out 21 to 17. Mm. It's going to be that's, ugly, though. How ugly? It's going to be It's gonna be ugly, but we bet the under. It's going to be ugly. I don't know what the over-under is. It's going to be ugly. It's, I can't imagine it's high. No, probably not. It's probably going to – it's probably gross. It's probably like a 35-point over-under, something <laughs> yeah. disgusting like that. Uh, if you I are, side note, why is Taysom Hill in the game so much? This guy pisses me off, man. Bro, he's him. Hey, bro, Taysom him. Taysom. him. <laughs> that's that's why I'm never drafted Kamara again. I'm never. I'm good until Taysom retires. I'm never touching the Saints running back, bro. He got no, it. Kamara being suspended, low key put him at the perfect like ADP towards like I can take him and low key. I don't ever have to play him, and it's like if he doesn't pan out, fine. But if he does, it's like. Nice. I got a little. I right. low key got a, a RB one in like right. round eight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, I wasn't taking that risk. He did. He did, he just hurt me too much. Bro, I could take yeah. that risk no more. Yeah, I can't. I don't know. There's a couple people that I know go on people's like block list or what is it? Blacklist. That's what it is. Every single yeah. year for fantasy, like I know people like DeAndre Swift was like, no, can't do it. I not, do not, it. Me. <laughs> not me. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a Swifty. <laughs> it's crazy because I'm a Swifty too, but I, bro, I couldn't do it. And I, but it's funny because I was so happy. Like, I'm, bro, you could have been playing me that week. I'd have been like, bro, I'm so happy for DeAndre, bro. Cause he was supposed, last year he was supposed to be the RB1. I don't care what no one says. He was supposed to be like the RB1. And they had the hard knocks. Like, why, why, why y'all bait with him on the hard I'm knocks? thinking, bro, I'm like, bro, he ain't about to go stupid this year. <laughs> and the week, and then the week one where he went crazy against the Eagles, I was like, oh, 
I folded. I folded, not drafting him. I folded. Nah, they. I'm glad he getting utilized right, and it's no disrespect to Gainwell, but I'm just not. I don't care how good Gainwell played, bro. Talent for talent, it's not a conversation, bro. Yeah, he's just talent wise one of the best running backs in the NFL. He just could not get the opportunity because I don't even think like I don't think health was as big of a factor as they made it seem like in Detroit, bro. They babied him. They but they do that a lot with injuries, bro. Like when J Mo came back, they was using him as a gunner. Like they just Lions just treat injuries so weird, bro. Like I I hate drafting Lions players. I'm be honest, bro. I'm not trade Gibbs. <laughs> I hate drafting Lions <laughs> players. They they do so much weird stuff. It pisses me off. Some of these medical staffs are questionable. It's in all caps. The Very Chargers, y'all need an investigation, bro. We still yeah. don't really know what happened with Tyrod Taylor, but how? They stabbed how he, him. That's what happened. <laughs> right. <laughs> bro went on an operating table and dude said, ah, hey, ah. Like, <laughs> He's got a janitor was just like, Yo, bro, you know how to do this? He was just like, I could try. I mean, yeah. You should have you should have known it was up when he un, un, took the cap off the syringe with his mouth. Like, ah. <laughs> I've been like, nah, bro, nah, bro. I'm straight. I'm straight. I'm good. Bro. I'm good. Bro. Yeah, yeah, some of these medical teams, bro. Y'all gotta step y'all game up. Then the Ravens, Ravens dudes always hurt. It, people need to start getting fired. That's what happens. Yeah, start losing their jobs. As as like small as these leashes be for quarterbacks and head coaches, yeah, head trainer. Yeah. Mm-mm. How many hamstring pulls we got this year? You're done. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're Facts. done. Facts. <laughs> you are Facts. done. If you can't figure out how to get the soft tissue right, nah, bro. You're hey, done. Buddy, you're not the man for the job. You're not our franchise I, head trainer. Because I'm telling you, I've been around NFL strength coaches. Shout out Michael Clark. That man, they, bro, the ones that know what they're talking about, wizards, bro. Literal wizards had me doing stuff I've never seen another human do before. Hmm. It I, ain't never, I, I ain't never pull a muscle. Ain't never have no soft tissue injury. So they know what they talking about. So I don't know. Y'all need to go find some wizard magic. Oh, dude, you getting hurt book. way too much. They hit the books. We better study. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's going to do it for today's episode. If you've made it all the way through, we appreciate you as always. Um, if you are on YouTube, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Um, like I said before, drop a comment. If you got any new podcast name ideas for a basketball, football podcast, go ahead, drop a comment. I'm taking all suggestions. Um, and then again, if you're on YouTube, feel me, pause it, go over to the audio platform and go and leave us a five star review, man. We're trying to, I'm just trying to break onto the sports charts on Spotify. Like we've got, let, let's keep the goals reasonable. Like let, let's just get up there. I mean, so we need, we need to get the review. So go on Apple podcast, go on Spotify, go ahead and drop a five-star review. It helps us out a ton and follow us on the socials there on screen. Um, yeah, I'm Billy. That's Dame and we out. Peace.